I love my iPad Pro. That's no secret. Each time I use it, I ask myself why I'm not reaching for it more often. I mean, technically speaking, I can finish most tasks in the same time, if not faster, on my iPad Pro versus my MacBook Pro. This includes things like photo editing, online shopping, emails, etc. I'm referring to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, by the way. Specifically, it's the 2018 version. I just couldn't convince myself to upgrade to the 2020 since the improvements don't really affect my needs. Uh, my name is Jonathan, by the way, and if you love your iPad as much as I love my iPad, make sure to give this video a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss any new videos like this one. Today, we're going over several tips and tricks that you can use with your iPad Pro to make it more like a laptop. The first one is get a keyboard. If it isn't obvious, the biggest way to make your iPad experience closer to a laptop is by getting a keyboard and mouse. This is especially important now that iPad OS has better mouse and keyboard support. If you're using a 2018 or a 2020 iPad Pro, I recommend picking up the Magic Keyboard case. It is really expensive, but it's improved my iPad experience tremendously. I love the new chiclet style keys, the backlighting is great, and the trackpad is insanely good. It definitely has its quirks though. The fact that it doesn't have function keys for at least the brightness and the volume is a head scratcher. The material that it's made out of is definitely something I really dislike. And even though the floating design is stunning, don't get me wrong, I have almost broken the keyboard and the iPad multiple times trying to tilt the iPad too far back because it just looks like it should go further back. Another great option is the Bridge Pro keyboard, which is much more affordable. It has an incredible design that makes your iPad look just like a MacBook. The downside of the Bridge Pro is that it doesn't have a trackpad, so you'll have to use a mouse or a trackpad separately. The Bridge Pro Plus, however, fixes this issue while also bringing much needed function keys. It is more expensive. Bridge Pro keyboards are also heavier and thicker, just to warn you. Plus, they rely on a Bluetooth connection, so immediate keyboard or trackpad response won't be as quick as the smart connection on the Magic Keyboard case. The second thing that you can do is expand your storage and your port selection. Since the iPad Pro features a USB-C port, expanding your port selection and storage is simple. I use the 12 South Stego dock. It has everything I could possibly need, including USB-A ports, micro SD and SD card slots, Ethernet, USB-C pass-through, and it has a USB-C cable integrated into the unit, so I never forget it. For storage, I've been using the Sabrent Rocket Nano, which is seriously the best portable SSD I've used so far. It has USB-C 3.2 speeds, and even though the iPad Pro still has 3.0 speeds, it's still fully compatible and plenty fast. The best part about the Sabrent Rocket Nano is that it is so small, it's crazy. I've been using the Sabrent Rocket Extreme on my MacBook Pro for a couple months now, and it's been phenomenal. I know it really doesn't pertain to the iPad Pro, but since I'm on the topic, I want to discuss it. The Extreme model has Thunderbolt 3, and it is blazing fast. Between the speeds, the build quality, and the overall size, I love Sabrent's portable SSDs. Plus, the Rocket Nano and the Extreme are really affordable. A one terabyte Nano is like 160 bucks on Amazon. I'll link everything that I mentioned in this video in the description. That way you can always check out those links for the most up-to-date prices. The third thing that you can do costs nothing because believe it or not, there are a few things that you can do outside of spending money to help improve your iPad experience. For one, if you decide to pick up the Magic Keyboard case, you're gonna notice that it doesn't have an escape key. Some of you guys might be really disappointed. Luckily, this can be fixed. All you need to do is go into the settings, general, keyboard, hardware keyboard, modifier keys, and from there, select one of the options that you don't mind changing to an escape key and just tap on it. If you're anything like me, you know the importance of web apps all too well. A neat little trick within iOS is the ability to use Safari to bookmark websites like they were applications that you downloaded from the App Store and they'll go straight to your homepage. Problem is, sometimes when you do this, you get the ugliest icon known to man. To fix this, you're going to need to go over to the website that you want to bookmark and copy that URL. Now head over to Google and do a search for the icon that you want to use. For example, if you're using the Amazon desktop website, do a search for Amazon's logo and then download it. Now head over to callmeicons.com and tap on create your own. Next, where it says select icon, tap on the drop down box and select website link. Now paste the website URL that you just copied and tap next. Enter the name that you want to name this app or bookmark and head to the next step. 
Finally, upload the logo that you downloaded earlier and tap next one more time. If the preview looks good, tap on create icon and follow those instructions. If everything went well, instead of having an ugly shrunken down window of a website, you should have the actual icon that you picked out and it should look way cleaner. Speaking of Safari, you can set it up to where whenever you visit a website, it's going to automatically default to the desktop website interface. Dive into your settings, go to Safari, request desktop website, and make sure all websites is turned on. The Files app is actually quite powerful despite all of the negativity that it gets. If you use a lot of cloud-based storage, you can link all of your accounts right here in one app. This is going to consolidate all of your files to make it easier to locate things versus having to open up different apps each time. Also, when you attach an external drive like the Sabrent drive that I use, it's going to pop up right here in the Files app. You can move files around between your cloud storage and even your connected drives. For internal storage, just tap on my iPad. You can view certain apps that have viewable internal file structures or create folders and move files over to your internal storage. It's not a desktop OS file structure, but I think it's effective and should be fine for most people. Number four is all about video editing, photo editing, and graphic designing because all of that can be performed on the iPad and it works really good. In fact, I find photo editing so much better on my iPad, especially with apps like Lightroom and Lights, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Designer. For video editing, you can use LumaFusion, which works crazy good. In fact, LumaFusion can play back 6K 10-bit footage from the S1H better than my MacBook Pro half at a time. Here's a quick tip for video editing on the iPad. If you want to apply various overlays, transitions, and effects, you can use Motion Array. Just follow my steps on how to make a website into an app, and then you can visit their website anytime you need to download any assets. If you have overlays, effects, or transitions you may want to use another time, you can move those files over to a folder using the Files app. This way you can access them much faster, especially since LumaFusion can access your file structures and your cloud storage right from the app itself. For music and sound effects, make sure to check out Artlist or Epidemic Sound. Artlist is my go-to for music with lyrics and for cinematic instrumentals. Epidemic Sound has more sound effects and better background music, I feel. If you want to sign up with either service, please use the links in the description. They're my affiliate links, so I do get a little uh, kickback from it. I'm not a graphic designer, so it's tough for me to comment on this, but I do know several people that prefer to use their iPads and apps like Affinity Designer, various Adobe apps, and Pixelmator. Lastly, you can download fonts from Adobe and then link them to your online Adobe account in order to use them in apps like Photoshop, Rush, Spark, etc. And you can also add fonts in the LumaFusion user fonts folder within the Files app. The fifth and final tip I have is for people that absolutely have to work in a desktop-like environment and that have some type of desktop or laptop computer that they can keep running all the time. You could use Screens, which is a $30 app that will allow you to remotely access your computer from anywhere in the world. I know it's not the same as having a laptop, but if you're trying to do something that can only be done on Mac OS or Windows, you can remote access a computer and it's a way of getting things done. And for a cheap option or a free option, you can use Chrome Remote Desktop. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand that until iPad OS can officially run desktop apps and allow access to a more extensive file structure, many people will not attempt to make this jump. However, I strongly encourage you to give it a shot if you can afford to do so. These tips and tricks have definitely helped me and I haven't been disappointed with my experience yet. Let me know down in the comment section how your experience has been with your iPad Pro. And if you don't have an iPad Pro, do you plan on picking one up? I wanna know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.